Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. With all the awful news Port Charles residents have received over the past six months, they could really use a vacation. However, a lawsuit that could knock General Hospital to its knees is about to shock the hospital, making things much worse. The most recent teaser shows Elizabeth receiving documents and being informed that the hospital has been served with a subpoena pertaining to Heather Weber. Although the expression on our beloved nurse's face suggests that she considers the situation somewhat absurd, she ought to give it some more thought. She doesn't have all the information, after all, including the fact that Portia altered the test findings to protect the populace at large and her daughter Trina specifically. Should that become known as a result of the case, Heather might be able to leave without any consequences. The gun that was dropped off at the PCPD is the subject of the other significant development that will take place in the episode that airs on Friday, October 11th. Martin appears adamant that it will benefit his customer, even though we're not quite sure who is in charge of its delivery. He even stops by Pentonville to inform Alexis that, barring any miscommunication, she will be leaving the area by the end of the day, this begs the question of just what fates, or, in this case, the writers of the show, have in store for Sonny and Carly. In another scene from the preview, Anna appears utterly assured as she inquires as to whether Carly would like to retract her statement on the night Agent Cates was killed, while Sonny is seen in another scene adamantly declaring that he had to be stopped. Since Sonny killed Cates, we've been wondering how on earth the show is going to get him out of this situation. However, it's not like they call him the Teflon Don for nothing. And when the pair revealed they were expecting a child in March 2023, things in their relationship took a very serious turn. The actor exclaimed, Lil Duel coming September 2023, as he shared a sweet photo of the soon-to-be mother and a banner revealing they were having a son. On Mother's Day in 2023, the daytime celebrity wished Lucci a happy Mother's Day, saying, Happy Mother's Day to you, senorita. You were an absolute star while you were pregnant. Looking forward to meeting our little bundle of love. And when Lucci revealed about her high-risk pregnancy and the reasons it had not been an easy trip, we all realized just how much of a rock star she was. A fresh chapter started in September 2023 when the couple brought young Dawson into their family. It's been quite the journey, Duel said once more. I'm excited to watch you grow into a wonderful man. In the midst of raising Dawson, who became one year old in August 2024, the pair launched Pura Beauty, a skincare company that bills itself as a haven where the tranquility of holistic skincare collides with the essence of Brazil. When Duel told Luchi what an amazing woman and mother she is, he was ecstatic and let her know it. Parents understand the need of taking time for themselves, and Duel and Lucci did just that in September 2024 when they went on a mini vacation. As the pair continues to create memories together, we hope to see more photos. Carly fusses at Sunny in the interim, probably disclosing that she discovered she was tailed, and it's possible that Sunny is more knowledgeable about being tailed than she is. Sonny seems to be telling her that they've been watched more closely than he thought, maybe he was also photographed with Natalia Ramirez. I'm going to go down right along with you, Carly yells to him, all fired up and on the verge of panic. Will they end up getting married for convenience once more in order to escape having each other testify against them? Jason is upset and regrets not killing Kate's when he got the opportunity at the Corinthos coffee warehouse. Given that Kate's was threatening Carly's freedom, Jason was attempting to keep his family safe. Jason and all those in contact with the renegade agent were aware of his dubious nature and that his personal grudge against Sonny took precedence over the pursuit of justice. Though Jason appears irate, his true anger is presumably self-reproach. If only he had taken him out, he could have avoided so much suffering, mayhem, and confusion. On this episode of General Hospital, Lucky looks for direction, Joss is left to clean up his mess, Carly receives assistance getting rid of her tail, Christina frantically tries to assist Alexis, and Jason and Sonny come up with a plan. Jason's office in the coffee warehouse is visited by Anna. She assures him that the kiss is permanent and won't happen somewhere else. Comprehensive, replies Jason. She then cautions him about joining the WSB and says Brennan is trying to recruit him. As she walks away, he stops her. Look after yourself, he advises. She'll keep an eye on him. When Joss arrives, Bobby's place is in disarray. 
As Lucky gets up from the floor, she learns he's the one causing all of the damage. She loses her mind over his disdain for Bobby. Joss questions his heartless behavior and asks why, given that Jason put his life in danger to save him, he isn't assisting Lulu. Fortune snarls that Jason squandered the journey. Joss is left to deal with the mess as he storms out. Joss glares slack-jawed at Lucky at Bobby's. Natalia visits Potsilos to talk to Sunny about business. He flashes his dimples, but she wants to act professionally because she feels too at ease with him. He persuades her to acknowledge that she wants to know him further, but there are several difficulties associated with his intricate connections. Carly uses a small mirror to check her appearance before rapping on Brennan's metro court door. Elaine, Felicia's PI co-worker, uses her phone to snap pictures as she walks in. Carly thanks Brennan inside for rescuing Lucky and Jason. She wants to at least pay for his dinner because she owes him a lot. He tells her, smiling, that she owes him nothing. Since he has many transactional relationships, he doesn't want them to have any. Carly stares Brennan flirtatiously from his hotel room in Metro Court. Dex gets a call about the destruction, so he and another police officer head over to Bobby's. Joss tells the senior officer that she doesn't want to submit a report because it's a family matter. The police depart as she and Dex exchange looks. Lucky visits the warehouse and runs into Jason. To leave that place, he needs a passport. That implies, Jason realizes, that Lucky cannot be a suitable donor for Lulu. Jason ponders whether or not he should hold off on seeing Laura. The disappointment in her eyes is something Lucky doesn't want to see. Moreover, he struggles to say goodbye. Jason, speaking from personal experience, says his family will be destroyed. When Anna arrives at her office, Molly is already there. Molly requests that she revive the inquiry into John Kate's murder and apprehend Sonny Corinthos, the true murderer. She's out of her control, says Anna. Furthermore, Sonny has an alibi, and she lacks proof. She is reminded by Molly that Carly previously lied when testifying on behalf of Sonny, and Molly provides numerous examples of circumstantial evidence. Anna restates that the FBI is currently in charge of it. Molly storms out, wondering whether all of her talk of justice is just talk. Laura Wright of General Hospital honored her longtime partner Wes Ramsey's birthday last weekend. The ABC soap veteran also posted a very special message for her handsome fella on Sunday. She frequently refers to her partner as her handsome fella in her posts. Oh, I'm so happy you were born. Wright said. Life is a wonderful journey with you in it. Love you baby, Ramsey said in response to the greeting happy, happy birthday baby. I'm grateful for yet another fantastic day in the greatest game of life. In addition to the lovely message, the actress provided two stunning pictures. The first features the birthday kid, who is positioned on a bench and has his arms outstretched to showcase the amazing surroundings. In the second, the pair was posing for pictures next to the river's side, amidst snow-capped mountains. Finola Hughes, Ramsey's previous co-star, also wished him a happy birthday in the comments section, and some viewers even expressed the wish that he could bring Peter back to Port Charles. He said, Today has been another beautiful day filled with love, laughter, gratitude, and fun. You have a happy birthday, my love. I appreciate everything that you have done. I love that we get to share it all with you, Kimba and I love you too. We also wish Ramsey a happy birthday and hope to meet him again during the day. Because empathy can soften comprehension, and once that happens, forgiveness might also occur. Naturally, Lucas's forgiveness of Brad is one thing, but if they resume their romance, the rest of his family, especially Carly and Michael, might have different opinions. Lucas really doesn't need to irritate them, but it may be minuscule in comparison to what's about to happen to him. It's been such a blast to be here and to be working with all these awesome people both in front of and behind the cameras, Hansis said to SOD, and I'm diving into a really exciting storyline. It has been so exciting to return to daylight hours. We have a sneaky suspicion that Lucas is involved in some way because Sam, Lucas' other sister, is likely to pass away shortly after Kelly Monaco departs and Lucas is going to have it quite difficult, as we can only imagine. Uncle Luke, cousin Kiki, sister BJ, and both his original and adoptive parents had already passed away. 
it will be devastating to return home and reunite with his sister just before her passing. But then, we think, that's just life in Port Charles. It's a fact that Sonny from General Hospital can only keep hiding the truth about what really transpired the night Cates was killed for so long. If the Teflon Don wants to prevent Christina's mother from being found guilty of a crime he perpetrated, he will need to either go off the pot or you know what while Alexis is in jail and getting ready for her impending trial. Nonetheless, it appears like things are headed in the wrong direction in the episode that will premiere on Thursday, October 10th. Diane receives new directives from Sunny, but Carly may stand her ground. After all, his recent behavior implies that I'm going to go down right along with you, as she informs him in the video below. Something suggests that her favorite ex's alibi, which she gave, would soon be shown to be a lie. Jason might end up being this whole thing's wild card. He acknowledges, I should have killed Kate's when I had the chance, but it's unclear if this means he's going to take matters into his own hands. It wouldn't be the first time, after all, that he acted rashly to keep Sonny and Carly safe. Regarding Alexis, a visit from Martin offers Heather's roommate some optimism. Laura and Lucky's reunion in another scene looks to be quite special. Can she persuade her son to stay in Port Charles now that she is aware of his return? Or will remorse over his failure to save Lulu's life, damn parasitic liver infection, make him flee the nation and the town? Sidwell told Anna, Jason, Lucky, and Holly the new regulations to the game. Jason and Anna would both survive if Jason prevailed in a card game. Holly and Lucky would be able to survive if Lucky prevailed. They would all perish if Sidwell prevailed. Holly spoke up swiftly, seeming to throw Jason, Anna, and Lucky under the bus while pleading for her own life. Sidwell was still enraged. Before securing Lucky and Jason's seats to the card table with handcuffs, Sidwell ordered his thugs to remove Anna and Holly. Sidwell took a seat to play but was soon called away, so Jason and Lucky were left on their own. Lucky was informed by Jason that his purpose for being there was to bring Lucky home. Jason eventually broke the terrible news to Lucky that Lulu needed a liver transplant and that he might be her only chance, despite Lucky's insistence that he could take care of himself. Before Lucky could process any of this, Sidwell came back for a decisive card game. Jason gave up fast, allowing Lucky to win. Sidwell marveled at how Holly always managed to land on her feet as he ordered the guards to remove Jason. Admire BNB, Days, General Hospital, or other soap operas. Participate in the discussion on our SC boards. To interact with fans and start a conversation right now, click this link. When Holly and Anna were alone in a cell, Anna questioned why Holly had not attempted to assist Lucky earlier. Holly clarified that she was unaware that he needed to give Lulu a portion of his liver. Holly was enraged because Anna and Jason had disrupted all her plans to gain millions from Sidwell. Anna urged Holly to have Robert tell Robin how much Anna loved her since she was certain that Holly would live and Anna would die. After their marriage, Holly remarked to Anna that it had been the sweetest time in my life. Anna observed that Robert was satisfied with Holly. But if you pass away here, Robert will never be content again. I just can't think out a way to prevent it, Holly said. At that moment, the guards showed there and dragged Holly outside while throwing Jason in the jail. Jason expressed his regret to Anna for the game's loss. I knew you would, a knowing Anna remarked. Anna quickly lost it and started to wonder if they would survive. Jason tried soothing Anna, but then he threw caution to the wind and planted a kiss on her. Sidwell was back in the poker room, threatening Holly and ready for another round. As Lucky hurried to free Sidwell from his handcuffs, Holly finally gave him a slap across the cheek. Holly reached for Sidwell's revolver, but as soon as Lucky removed his handcuffs, Sidwell smacked it out of her hands. Stella ran into a thoughtful Tracy in the park. Tracy sat there looking glum while Stella babbled on about the weather. Tracy was unhappy that Stella had come for their appointment on time, which Tracy considered late. Stella became irritated as she saw Tracy wasn't genuinely upset about being late. At last, Tracy acknowledged that she was displeased with two employees at Quartermain because they were insubordinate and ill-mannered. Stella concurred that employees shouldn't act in such a way while on the job after Tracy revealed that Sasha had hosted a brunch for Cody's family. But Tracy had to acknowledge that Sasha and Cody had taken the day off to attend the brunch. 
Stella realized right away that Tracy's true issue stemmed from her feelings for Cody. Tracy promptly disclaimed to be in love with Cody. Stella expressed her opinion that Tracy shouldn't feel that way, but she could understand if she did. That Cody's a tall drink of water, Stella said in jest. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.